Welcome back to Black News Tonight. As my avid viewers already know, my favorite TV show of all time, the greatest TV show of all time, it ain't just my favorite, it's the best, it is The Wire. And there is no wire without the legendary, villainous Marlo Stanfield, brilliantly portrayed by actor Jamie Hector. Now, Jamie now plays the fan favorite, big turn, Detective Jerry Edgar in the TV series Bosch. It's the longest running show on Amazon. How'd it go? Didn't. What happened? And just getting started, her lawyer showed. You can't put that on me. So how do you think her lawyer knew where to find her? You're making a big deal out of nothing. She would have lawyered up sooner or later. Later would have been better. You f***ed up. Own it. But like you never make a mistake. St. Harry. I'm tired of carrying your ass, man. In its seventh and final season, the series pushes Detective Edgar to the edge as he grapples with the consequences of shooting a suspect while on duty. Challenged by feelings of guilt and confusion, his professional and personal life turn upside down. Joining me now is the man himself, the actor, Jamie Hector. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you, my brother. What's happening, Mark? My man. Man, I am so proud of the work you do, man. You were able to be part of really two major long-running series. What's it like doing this one, though, man? First of all, you're playing a cop. And second, you're doing it for seven years. You know what? I, I enjoyed it. I loved it. Built great relationships, great stories. Um, the material, you know, it's all about the material as well, right, Mark? Um, and once that writing comes into play and you see that um, the writers know what they're doing, you, 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 you move in to have a lot of fun. When you're looking for a role, are you trying to stretch yourself? Like, like when you say, like, okay, I'm about to take a role playing detective. I just played one of the most villainous dope boys in the history of TV. Like, do you think, like, is, is that how you, do you have a calculus about that? Like, I'm trying to pivot? No, yeah, no, absolutely. Because, you know, you always want to um, move in a direction of something different, right? Something challenging, something creative. And everything is challenging if, it's, if, it, if it has teeth. And if it's a story that you want to tell, right? Um, a homicide detective, you know, like the first season, we focused on necrophiliacs, right? This one individual that was, you know, committing that. So to be a detective, to try to figure out and investigate, investigate homicide, you stretch yourself in the shadow of a professional that's really doing the work, um, ask questions, you dig deep, you do the research, and it's fun. And it's, and it's really fun, though. You know, I'm, I'm happy to say I'm still having fun doing this. Man, is, is it, what's it like doing a TV series versus, because you're a very serious actor. I mean, you do theater, you do film, you do everything. What, is, is, is a TV show for you a more favorable, a more enjoyable experience, or is it just different? It's just different. I, just, I love it all. You know, it's like, to quote Pacino, theater is like walking a tightrope, right? Um, you can't really fall. But in television, you know, you don't like to take, you get a chance to go back and revisit that. Um, and go again, you know? But at the same time, you still put that same level of work behind the scenes in in order to get it right, to make sure that the audience appreciates what you've done and make sure that you're satisfied with the work that you put out there as well. Mm. One of the things you're grappling with this series, it, your character's grappling with this season, is uh, shooting a suspect uh, while on duty. Um, we're in the age of George Floyd. We're in the age of you know, Black Lives Matter protests around the world, really, against police violence. Uh, how did you enter that role? How did you process that? How do you grapple with it? You know, it was... All, everything that you just now said was affecting me in a great way, right? But in regards to that situation, it was also personal because I dove into the character. So this individual... Mm. My parents are from Haiti, um, the first Black Republic, right? Um, freed slaves, right, that fought the French and made their way to plant that flag in 1804. The focus was then turned on to this individual that committed atrocities in Haiti. So he assassinated hundreds, if not thousands of families, men, women, and children. And then he relocated to the states by the help of the federal government. And then he was in um, L.A. doing the same thing. Then they went, They came and allowed him to take out a couple of people. Then they were going to redirect him to, like, Miami. So um, mm. I probably went over there to say bye, but one thing led to another, which led to that. But it, to me, it was more so of a focus on 
this guy right here is a stain, right? I didn't, I'm not saying that I killed him intentionally, but Jerry Edgar is grappling with the fact that he still killed this guy and the consequences of that are showing up in his life. How did I deal with it during the time of George Floyd, during everything that's going on? It was hard, man. It wasn't easy, bro. It was, you know, uh, you turn on the news, you, you look around you, it's affecting you. It's affecting me, you know, and I just had to take that and pour it into yeah. the work. Wow. Well, you certainly poured it into the work because we can see um, how you grapple with it. And I think that's an important part. We don't want to normalize or excuse police violence, but we also have to understand that police, even the, even the killer cops that we protest and that we want locked up and all that other stuff, they're still, they're human beings who are wrestling with this stuff. There's a human part of this that, you, like you said, affects every part of their lives. And you, you put that on screen in a way that only good art can. Um, before you go, talk to me a little bit about uh, the youth you've been working with, man. Since 2007, you've been empowering young people through arts education uh, with your organization, Moving Mountains. Uh, how'd you come up with that idea? Why, what made you want to do that? There was something that saved my life when I was young also, you know, gave me a place to redirect my energy and my time. I was part of a theater company called Tomorrow's Future Theater Company when I was young. And, you know, you step into a space that you're invited to and you realize how much it changes your life. You realize how much it just, that thing happens. And I know you probably experienced it in your life also, right, Mark, where you know you belong here. So moving forward, mm -hmm. I left to go and shoot the wire. And then I came back to visit and a young man named Damo, he, he looked at me and said, so this is what we do, huh? We just become successful and we just leave. At that point, I realized, I called my team, we put the paperwork together, the 501c3, et cetera. And we said, let's go to work and just building this program in a community that provides free access to serious training in drama and filmmaking. Provided for those that want to come, whether they're artists or not, right? They're going to find a place to come and build with like-minded individuals and, and do something and no idle time, focus and have a place that they want to come to. So started in 2007 because we knew that there was a void and we wanted to fill that void. Well, y'all filled the void, man, the work you're doing with young people. I mean, you could literally just be focusing on your art. You could literally just be focusing on your craft. And you mastered that, but you also find time to give back and support our young people and move the next generation forward, man. That's what makes you such an extraordinary brother, man. That's why we're so proud of you, and that's why we support you, man. Jamie, good to see you as always, man. Thanks for hanging out with us on Black News tonight. Mark, good to see you as well, brother. Same. Always, my brother.